Hey, what's up guys? Jake with Legacy 4x4 here again. And today we're gonna to be building the drain and fill system for my do-it-yourself plasma CNC. So the goal of this project is to create a drain and fill system for the water table here on the plasma cutter that's going to be utilized to maintain the water level where I want it or where I need it for depending on whatever I'm cutting. And then also it's going to give me an ability to completely drain the system so I can clean the water bed as well as not have water sitting inside the table when I'm not using it. I will be putting either a borax or a clean cut kind of solution in this which is gonna help with rust on the slats and on the work pieces. I just don't have that yet. That will come after my move and there's not gonna be a video about that. The, system, the idea here is pretty straightforward. I'm gonna be applying a small amount of air pressure to the top of the barrel and then it's gonna be draining and filling through two sections of PVC pipe. Not really complicated at all. I didn't wanna add any more electric motors or anything like that. Otherwise I could have done a sump pump of some kind but instead I chose to go this route because I think this is simpler and cleaner and I already have compressed air at the table anyways because I use the compressed air to run the plasma cutter obviously. So it should be a fun little video. It's gonna be quick and short. This is an easy part of the process. So anyways, stick around guys. We'll see how this one ends out. All right, so this is the water pan all set up. This is how I got it from my steel supplier. So this is a five foot by five foot sheet of 14 gauge. All they did was notch out the corner pieces and then they bent it on their 12 foot break to make a perfect water pan. The water pan here, this piece cost me $70 with the steel and with the labor that they charged for getting it done. And then over here I have the slat holders which they plasma cut on their plasma cutter and then took a break to and broke along the very bottom of them over there. Anyways, all I gotta do is come through here and weld up the four seams, and then I gotta add in the slats in the middle, and then that's, that's good progress there. All right, this is it all finished up before I paint it. It's pretty simple, as you can see. The slat holders that were plasma cut by my steel supplier are there, bent in. I did add on the underside of it, I had some quarter inch scrap. I did that just to give just a little bit underneath of that for water to drain out doing it like this where the steel supplier bent this and i just welded it up super easy uh, i did add one more thing based on my last table that i just kind of like felt like i wanted to have and if i end up hating it i will take them off i added these little um again this is just a little quarter inch scrap the same scrap i used at the bottom of this actually um i welded those i welded two of them one on each side my plan is I'm gonna tape this off and I'm gonna leave it completely bare and I'm gonna use this to hook my ground clamp up to. All right, sorry this video is taking me a little longer to get out. I um, got distracted. Like I mentioned last time, my wife and I are actually moving here in about two weeks. And so I was refinishing and restoring my car trailer, which you can see over there, I just finished up. So I got a little bit distracted by getting that project out of the way because that has to get done before I can move. So that, that way I can move like the Jeep and everything else to my new house. Anyways, here's what we got now. I'll show you guys what you guys all really care about anyways, which is how I'm doing this automatic drain system. All right, so we got a few parts here to make this happen. A bunch of different random fittings, some air hose, some valves, a little spigot thing, a piece of pipe, a bunch of random stuff. Essentially, the idea here is I'm going to use this air hose and the associated air fittings here to regulate pressure into the top of the barrel on the plasma cutter. So I did a bunch of reading and things like that. Um, watched a couple YouTube videos on how people have done this before. Unfortunately, there's not very much out there for how this system is supposed to work. So I'm kind of like free flowing it a little bit on this. I have a basic idea though. So essentially we're gonna apply one to three PSI of pressure into the top of this water barrel that's underneath the plasma cutter. And then by applying that pressure, we're gonna basically force all the water out up through some one inch PVC pipe and then up into the table itself through the drain hole. So the drain hole is gonna serve two purposes. One, to 
um, physically drain water out of the table and then another one to actually refill the table. I've seen videos of this working. It looks like it's pretty clean. It's going to work pretty well. And now the only thing that it needs is air pressure. I don't need to have any additional motors or anything like that. So we're going to give this a shot. That was actually substantially easier than I was expecting it to be. Um, as you saw, I have those little cutters that I had from a bathroom project once. Uh, they make cutting small pieces of PVC like this super quick and easy, and that's what I used to cut all the PVC to length, and I kind of like trimmed it as I went to get it perfect. But here's where we're at now. All right, so you guys can see the basic setup here. It's pretty straightforward. There's a drain slash fill port right here. This is where the water will go back into the barrel and then we'll come out of the barrel as well once we start uh, pulling. We have a simple valve up here, big brass valve that ties into this piece of iron pipe, which is welded into the base of the table, as you can see up there. Pretty simple, should be just, you turn it on to allow air or water flow. If you're up, not applying air pressure, the water should drain through this pipe through these and into the barrel there. If you are applying air pressure, it should do the opposite. Air pressure should go in and water should push up and out through here. I recognize that this is over here and this is gonna be utilized as a, um, a spout. So you can throw a hose on this and then I can drain the, all of the fluid out into the grass or something once I get set up. When you're applying pressure, it will obviously come out this direction and stop here, but this valve here should um, prevent anything from coming out that direction and everything should take the path of least resistance up, up, and into the table. At least, that's the idea. We're gonna test it here in a second, see how it works. All right, so we're getting ready to do the first test pour to see if this water table here is gonna be watertight or not. And sneak peek, the Jeepster is out of the garage for the first time in about two years. So I did not fill it all the way to the top because I am moving in like two weeks. So I'm gonna end up draining this anyways to get it on the trailer. So I'm not gonna fill it all the way up just to drain it. But you can see I did go about an inch, inch and a half or so, and it is holding water perfectly fine. There's no leaks out of any of the corners, particularly important on this corner because the electronics are directly below it. But no leaks, no nothing. Now we're gonna Hit the valve and we're gonna see if it drains. It is draining. No leaks yet in any of the plumbing pipes. So it's working. You can see that the drain hole is here underneath this slat. Seems to have no issues pulling the water back down into the barrel though. It drained pretty well. I, I am gonna have to shim the back of it a little bit, but that's okay. I'll figure out something on the legs back there to get it to raise up a little bit to get the water to pull forward. It drains pretty fast down to like the last quarter of an inch. And then that last quarter of an inch of water just starts to drain really slowly. Not a huge deal. That's not a huge deal, I'm being honest, because I can always set it to drain and then just let it drain while I walk away or do other stuff. So not a huge deal. But anyways, I'm gonna show you guys the filling part of it, which is the more cool, impressive part anyways. You've got, as you can see here, a regulator from, from the pump over there. I'm just running 10 PSI from the pump to this regulator. I'm gonna get a better one of these. I don't like this one a lot, but that'll work. It's currently off, and now all you do is turn it on, and you can see in here, it will start to, oh, well, you also have to turn this on, and now you can see what it starts to do there. 
that's it. Pretty straightforward little system. This is the easiest of all of the videos in this series for building this plasma cutter, but it's one of the cooler features, I think. So hopefully you guys like that. Anyways, like, like always, when it comes to these plasma cutter videos, if you have questions, feel free to drop them below and I'll answer them as soon as I can to try to help you design your own system. This one's pretty easy though. I just went to Lowe's and I just connected little pieces of PVC and brass fittings until I had a design that was, I knew was gonna work for me. This is about as simple as it gets, you know, one pipe for in and out, and then we've got a completely separate one over there off of a T to drain with, and then we've got just an air in the, the top there. So really not, not bad. Quick little easy project. The next video is gonna be software. I've got that currently working here. I've been working on it a little bit, but it's not quite ready yet. So I gotta do some fine tuning and then I'll actually shoot that next video once I have a good understanding of how this stuff works together and how to make this work for you. Like always guys, make sure you like, share, and subscribe if you like videos like this. It really helps us out a lot and we really appreciate making these videos and we appreciate it when you guys tell us that you like them. But anyways, have a good one guys.